Good evening and welcome back to the Lizard of Doom channel. My name is Max and it's nice to have you back. I'm going to paint for you today a camouflage space marine, as the title suggests. To feed the algorithm. All hail the algorithm. I've already painted some, it's not just for the algorithm, I do quite like space marines. Here are a few shots of what I'm going to be tutorialing today. These are Space Marine Primaris Reavers. I've picked them because they are just badass. I mean, look at these guys. They've got the skull masks. They've got the option to have full helmets, but I like them helmetless. And you can see the cool gnarly scars on their head and wires. I've painted these a little while ago, so I'm not going to restrict myself and stick to the same exact way I've painted different colours on these models then. And I'm going to try and show off uh, maybe I've got a little bit of grey. I think I've got a little better at edge highlighting. My leather's a little bit nicer. But as you can see, the camo is looking quite nice. Let me show you how to get these guys done in this lovely camouflage style. I'm just going to do how to do the camo part. If you guys want leather or if you want any other bits of this model to be tutorial, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best. I know people are very pure loyalists to their chosen factions in 40k and Space Marines chapters specifically. If you're an Ultramarines fan, an Imperial Fist fan, that's fine by me, but part of the fun for me is making up your own. These are my Astra Predatorus, Space Predators. Not that kind of Predator, this kind of Predator. They are a successor chapter of the Black Templar. They are devoted to ridding jungle worlds of foul Xenos and heretics. They take back Imperial bases that have been overrun by overgrown planets. And there's only about 20 Space Marines in the entire 1K list, which is something interesting, something I might show you in the future. The reason they are a Black Templar successor chapter is because I want them to run really fast and punch with a big jungle knife. There's nothing really to do with about that fluff. It just had the right rules. So I made that up, which you're allowed to do. As for the actual technicalities of the camo pattern, I am using the colour scheme of a British camo pattern. Because if you haven't figured out yet, on British, I'm using the British Disruptive Pattern Material, DPM. This was used in the British Armed Forces between 1960 and as recent as 2016, that's 56 years that this was in service. So I think this is a good colour scheme to go for. As far as the actual pattern itself, the shapes I'll be painting, those are kind of made up by me, something that is a little bit nicer to paint on a miniature because the colours scale well in smaller areas, but the pattern is exceedingly hard to get right to make something look appealing on a small miniature that is designed for a full-size human. Thank you for coming back and returning to the channel. If you saw my last videos, which was the launch of the channel last Friday, I'm back like I'm going to be every Friday, so like and subscribe for the next one that comes out. So without further ado, Let's get into it. This is the Reaver we'll be putting some camouflage on today. You can see I have sprayed it Angel Green, which is an Army Painter spray paint, and I've done a dry brush from the top of War Boss Green, coming down from the top to get that nice top edge highlight. We're not going to be highlighting any of the actual camo pattern, just the green, and that gives it the illusion that it's all highlighted. The first paint we'll be using is Morn Fang Brown. I'm going to put a little bit on my wet palette and thin it slightly. The shapes we're going to be painting is kind of like a snake's tongue. What I do is I draw a little squiggly line and branch it off to one side, then come back in where it branched off to one side and do another one underneath or above. So you have a look at that there. These are snake's tongues, devil tongues, whatever you want to call them. Devil tongues, lizard tongues, what am I talking about? Let's call them lizard tongues. These lizard tongues will form the basis of your camo pattern. You want to space them out slightly so you leave a nice green sections in the middle of each one to give other colours a chance to breathe on the model. Every bit of the marine that would normally be blue, black, yellow, whatever your chapter's colour is, you need to hit with one of these brown lizard tongues. It also looks nice if they cross over between plate to plate, say like chest plate to shoulder plate or back plate to backpack. It gives it a nice kind of whole feeling to the model. It can be quite difficult getting in some of the tight areas of these little squiggles, but you don't have to put a full lizard's tongue. Sometimes a little hint of one will do like two tips if it was the end or one little tip if it was the start of where a lizard's tongue should be. Hit every damn bit of this model, even the little, I think these are grav shoot flappy things because they can deep strike in. 
There we go. Now we've given him a nice lizard tongue lick all over. That sounded weird. Again with the same process, I put a small amount on my wet palette and thin it slightly with water. The next colour being a bad and black. Not too thin though, because we are not going to be layering this, we just don't want it gloopy. We don't want to have to layer it again and try and hit the same kind of lizard tongue pattern multiple times, because you'll never get it quite the same. Now with the black, we're going to go in between these brown lizard tongues with black lizard tongues, the same kind of shape. They need to slightly touch the brown lizard tongues for it to look coherent and like it's a pattern rather than just shapes next to each other. But mainly we're going to be filling in more green space in between, leaving only small glimpses of green showing through. Sometimes less is more, but there's no strict rules to this. If it feels right to put one there, then you put one there. Enjoy the time doing this. It feels like a nice relief from painting the normal way and worrying about blending and edge highlighting because all that was done with a rough dry brush and the rough dry brush when this is on actually adds a bit of like wear and tear look to it where it's not like the most professional smooth dry brush in the world it looks like it's battle worn armor I talked about it a minute ago, but I'm going to talk about the importance of not hindering yourself while painting an entire army. If you grow as a painter, it's okay to slightly change your paint scheme. Every man doesn't have to have a leather pouch that is the same colour. Maybe in story, one guy's an old hat at the job and he's been there for 20 years and he's got his original leather pouch. Maybe someone is brand new and they've got a brand new shiny one if you want to experiment painting different leathers then it's totally up to you this goes for every part if you improve as a painter let yourself improve as a painter if you stick to the same paint style paint brand paint brush even sometimes you're not going to grow and that's all this hobby is about improving your skill set and learning something new and of course having fun as well Now we're done with the black lizard tongues, it is on to our next colour. Our next colour being Xandri Dust, a classic bone base. Same damn routine as the last two, put a little bit on the wet palette and thin it slightly. This time we're going to be painting something a little bit different. The lizard tongues are out the window. What we're doing now is just little dashes. This is because this is quite a bright colour. I found when I was in the experimenting stage of this painting style, if I put too many lizard tongues of this colour, the armour became too bright, especially in the recesses and the shadowy areas. I refined it into these little dashes, mainly hitting more green space that we've left, but also crossing both black and brown lizard tongues to make it one coherent amorphous blob of camo colour. This painting style seems weird to watch and it feels weird as well and it's kind of an ugly duckling. At this stage where the rest hasn't been painted and you've got this strange miniature that hasn't been highlighted correctly it looks or it hasn't been designed very well because a paint mark goes from chest plate to shoulder plate or around one entire arm. It looks weird, it feels weird, but the magic happens when you paint in all the other parts and it kind of becomes almost secondary this camo pattern. After this a step I did was give it a nice Agrax Earthshade wash, a brown wash, kind of tie it all together, get in the deep crevices of the armour, make it look a bit dirty and sweaty like he's been in the jungle for a while and the earth and grime has built up on him. This also unifies the four colours used, green, brown, black and bone and makes them all kind of a similar tone to each other. Now next we will have the magic moment when everything else has been painted. This is the final thing. You can see that I've gone slightly different on the leather and where I've done the armour trim, the face and the undersuit and everything around it. It really brings the camo pattern into its own. Compared to an older model that I've painted six months to a year ago, 
you can see that there are a few differences. I think the leather is the most noticeable difference. You can see on the older model, I've got quite bright leather and it's not very realistically highlighted. It's all just kind of brought up and up through the layers, how Games Workshop teach and not actually how they paint. Whereas on the new leather, you can see that it's quite dark and crusty, like it's old and the edges are worn quite nicely with jaggedy patterns coming up through different browns. And I've used Army Painter paint on those because it's a slightly gloss brown, which gives it a more leather look. Now the next section to do is basing. I'm gonna show you how to put a nice jungle base on this boy to go with your jungle camo pattern. I've used some Sector Imperialis bases, some official Warhammer kind of texture bases, here they are. You can see they've got some nice metally concrete bits and some extra space, so you could do this as urban, but I've chosen to do it as some kind of rundown depot or supply place in the middle of the jungle that's been overgrown and taken back by the jungle. The first thing you're going to need is some coconut fiber. You can get this in pet shops as lizard bedding, funnily enough, and it comes in an absolute brick like this. Now, the instructions for putting it in a, in a terrarium say put water on it. Do not put water on it because this will render it useless because it's like a Weetabix. Once you put a little bit of water on it, it'll soak it up and become wet and soppy and useless. You need to break it up, maybe chisel into the side. You can see where it's got slight layers to it and pull it apart. And it does take a little while to pick it apart, but it is worth it. There are quite a lot of long hairs from the coconuts in this box. So you might need to pick a few out, sift a few out, but otherwise they do look like roots when they're on and it's totally fine and blends right in. I've given where I'm going to be putting this on the base, a Gargax sewer undercoat, and now I'm gonna apply PVA glue to this. I find this stuff is quite hard to paint unless you spray paint over it at the start. So it looks jungly, it looks like jungle leaf litter. Why try and paint it to look like jungle leaf litter? I think it looks fine as it is. So we sprinkle it on like any kind of basing compound here, you can see, and tap off the excess at the end. little clean up now with the brush, get all those little bits and dust off where it shouldn't be. And it looks like the jungle is reclaiming this bit of factory or depot or imperial outpost. Next, I've got these little seeds that I got off weeds that grow out the back of my house in the lane. I got them in autumn. Next autumn, I'm thinking of making a video where I go around the woods near my house and collect all my basing bits. As you can see, they look like nice little leaves. This is just to add a little bit of texture and difference to the leaf litter on the base. I'm gonna use super glue for these to keep them in place because I have used PVA in the past and I find that these leaves are quite springy and they kind of pop off at any resistance. So super glue needs to keep them down nice and tight. The same kind of routine with this as in the coconut fiber. Just press them onto where the glue is, give them a sprinkle, make sure you've got them nice and covering all the glue because you don't want any super glue showing through when it gets white and crusty, it just doesn't look very nice. So make sure you've covered all the area you've glued with this. And there we go, a little bit more leaf litter. And now time for a look at the finished model with all his friends. Now this camo pattern can also be used on vehicles. If you have a look in this shot here, you will see my Space Marines plane. You can see that the, the way I've separated the panels is not to paint the camo pattern on the edges. So you can see some nice definition in areas of the plane, like the wings and the main body. All of these guys look fantastic together and you don't even notice that I've painted the newest one slightly different from the rest. So this is my way of making my Space Marines my own. Let me know what kind of different color patterns you go for on your Space Marines. I like to know the stories behind everything. Leave it in the comments because that's a big part of it to me, making up stories to go with these models. If you do want to know how to do the leather or any other different bits around this or see it maybe painted on a bigger model, let me know in the comments as well. And yeah, I'm looking for suggestions what to do next. I'm thinking of doing something, I've got some Chaos Knights that I'm thinking of doing a thing with. Is that a thing? Let me know what you guys would like to see in the future. Be a pal, like and subscribe. 
And remember, it's not a pile of shame. It's a pile of future.